Hey, it's Craig. I just wanted to let you know that you can listen to Canadian History X early and ad-free on Amazon Music, included with Prime. Hey everyone, Craig Baird here. Before I begin today's story, I want to take a moment and ask that you check me out on Patreon at www.patreon.com slash Canada EHX. There are several tiers with great benefits, from ad-free content to t-shirts and other cool stuff. And if you're a fan of Canadian History X, make sure you check out my other shows, From John to Justin and Canada, A Yearly Journey. And don't forget, you can also donate directly to the show at www.canadaehx.com. It helps keep this show going. All right, on with the show. A listener's note. The following episode contains coarse language, adult themes, and content of a violent and disturbing nature, and may not be suitable for everyone. Listener discretion is advised. It was sometime in summer in the early 1990s. I took a break from whatever yard work or farm work I was doing, and I sat down with my lunch in front of my TV. I don't remember what I was watching. It's been 30 years after all. But when the show went to commercial, my life changed. This commercial was not selling something I could buy in the store. Instead, it advertised Canada's history. Thinking back to that day, I believe it was the story of James Naismith and the birth of basketball. In it, a janitor climbs up to get a ball from a basket and laments the task of getting the ball. When it's suggested that a hole be cut in the bottom, he says, I need these peach baskets back. From that moment on, I was enraptured by Canadian history for the rest of my life. And I'm not the only one. Just say, I smell burnt toast to a Canadian and see what they say because the impact of these commercials on me cannot be understated. I'm Craig Baird, this is Canadian History X and the Heritage Minutes. Three things inspired my passion in Canadian history and placed me on the road I'm on now, sharing history for my living. Pierre Burton, Canada, a people's history, and those Canadian history commercials I stumbled upon three decades ago. Walter Stewart, the outspoken journalist for the Globe and Mail known as Canada's Conscience, once said, For most Canadians, history starts about a week ago last Friday. And he was right. Before the Heritage Minutes, few Canadians knew their history. And what they learned typically came from a book as Canadian history on the screen was in short supply. And it would have stayed that way. And maybe I would have never been inspired to start this podcast had it not been for one man, Charles Bronfman. Charles Bronfman was, and still is, a rich man. He's currently worth over $2 billion and is easily one of the wealthiest men in Canada. He loves baseball, he even owned the Montreal Expos from 1968 to 1991, and like me, he also loves history. That led him to establish the Charles R. Bronfman or CRB Foundation in 1986 with the goal of enhancing Canadianism and unity of the Jewish people. Soon after its formation, the Foundation commissioned a national survey to determine Canadians' awareness of history. And as it turned out, they knew shockingly little about their own history. The survey found that only 57% of Canadians could name the first Prime Minister of Canada. It's Sir John A. Macdonald, by the way. Only 26% could name three Canadian authors. There are many, but three of my favourites are Pierre Burton, Farley Mowat, and Margaret Atwood. Some of those surveyed thought Ernest Hemingway was Canadian and that Hunter S. Thompson wrote Anne of Green Gables. He isn't, and that was Lucy Maud Montgomery. Most shockingly of all, barely half of respondents could name the year that Canada became a nation. It was 1867. Charles Bronfen found this unacceptable. He believed history could be taught, not through traditional academic systems, but through popular culture to make it more approachable and palatable to the public. He was so shocked that in a meeting of the CRB Foundation, he said, If television can use 30 seconds or 60 seconds to persuade people that Cadillacs or cornflakes are interesting, could we also use that short piece of time to persuade Canadians that their own history is interesting? You tell me how to do it, and I will fund it. With plenty of money now at their disposal, the CRB Foundation put together six criteria for choosing topics that eventually became our beloved Heritage Minutes. They were... Intriguing to Canadians, be easily produced, be truthful with some dramatic license, celebrate and reflect on cultural and social values like multiculturalism, bilingualism, and Indigenous history, reveal origin stories, and surprise, provoke reflection, re-examination, and raise questions. 
Each minute was designed to capture the audience's attention in a similar style to an advertisement. Anthony Wilson Smith is the president of Historica Canada, which is what the CRB Foundation is now called. He says the making of the minutes into ads that sold Canada was what helped them resonate. That they were actually, you know, they actually thought of by Charles Brockman, who's still on our board, who first founded them in uh, in 1991. So that was, you know, pre-internet, pre any real sense of what was coming, and they're absolutely perfect for it because they're sort of like bite-sized motion pictures, you know, but uh, but made for a, you know, made for a, a fleeting attention span in a way, you know, you tell the story quickly, you tell it thoroughly, you get in, you get out, and then you leave people to ponder, and ideally, people then say. Wow, that was you know that was just so cool. I got to find out more about it. Of course, creating those heritage minutes was not a simple task. Decisions had to be made about which stories to include, how to balance English and French while also including immigrants and Indigenous people's stories. It wasn't easy, but in 1988, although some say 1987, just a few years after the shocking survey, the CRB Foundation developed three pilot heritage minute episodes. They were Valor Road, Underground Railroad, and Jacques Plante. Valor Road told the story of three men who grew up on the same street in Winnipeg and each earned the Victoria Cross in the First World War. That street was renamed Valor Road as a result. Jacques Plante took us back to when the legendary goalie first put on a mask in a hockey game, and the Underground Railroad detailed the story of Canada as a haven for enslaved people looking for freedom by following Harriet Tubman's route north. Once the minutes were produced, they tested in front of focus groups in Toronto and Montreal, with both English and French-speaking participants. Organizers looked to see how the participants enjoyed the minutes and asked about their level and interest in Canadian history. Without knowing it, these participants became part of our collective heritage and changed one future podcaster's life. Thankfully, that focus group responded favorably, and the new program was expanded through 1989, and by 1990, the first group of heritage minutes were chosen, and filming soon followed. By November 1990, the first official series of Heritage Minutes was in the can, and as they say in show business, was ready for its time in the spotlight, which would come the following year on, of all things, a quiz show. Now before we continue on our journey, we need to take a detour to talk about a Canadian show that was immensely popular in the 1980s and 1990s, On the Road Again. The one-off history quiz show was hosted by Wayne Rostad, who also hosted On the Road Again. The program, called The Heritage Quiz, debuted on March 31st, 1991. And when The Heritage Quiz debuted, several Heritage Minutes came along with it. There was Joe Schuster excitedly talking about his new creation of Superman. You can hear a bit more about him in my episode on the Canadian Whites. Then we got the story of Jacques Cartier, misinterpreting the settlement name of Canada to be the name of the land itself. I talked about Jacques Cartier and his meeting with the Indigenous and Donnacona in an episode last year. And lastly, there was the story of Nellie McClung holding her mock debate to fight for women's suffrage in Manitoba. And while I've not done an episode specifically on Nellie McClung, I have covered the Famous Five, so check it out. In all, 13 Heritage Minutes were broadcast during the show. But who was behind all of them? Well, Patrick Watson was the driving force in writing, directing, and narrating many of those first 13 minutes, and many more over several years later. On the business side of things, there was Michael Levine during those early years, and he says he was the glue that brought Charles and Patrick together. Over lunch, I said, you know, Charles, um, you know, you write the check. I'll do the business deals, but uh, I don't do scripts or windows. Um, I can't create the minutes. And out of that came um, my introduction to uh, to, uh, Charles of Patrick Watson, the eminent broadcaster. There had been one or two pilot minutes created before, but bringing Patrick in was really the beginning of the surge of the Heritage Minutes. Uh, and, And Patrick wrote and narrated a number of the early ones. Watson was a Canadian broadcasting legend, having co hosted This Hour Has Seven Days on the CBC in the 1960s and The Undersea World of Jacques Cousteau. He also acted in over 50 films, including the Terry Fox story in 1983. Watson was part of the Minutes for decades, until his death in 2022. He said the focus of the Minutes was to avoid pedantry, while creating, quote, indelible images in the minds of the viewers. 
After the Heritage Quiz aired in 1991, the 13 original short vignettes were broken up and ran between shows on CBC and CTV. The media at the time called them engaging and interesting, but the biggest criticism was there was only 13, and with constant rotation, they became a bit dull. Hester Riches, writing for the Vancouver Sun, said, I watched the preview reel for the new Heritage Minutes and enjoyed them more than I'd expected, even better than the first bunch. The godfather of popular Canadian history and my personal historical hero, Pierre Burton, said, It is very important to have a narrative history as the Americans have had for a long time. We need a sense of our roots and our background, and until we know that, and until we find out where we came from and are proud of, we won't know where we're going. The Heritage Minutes attempted to look at Canadian history through different ethnicities, genders, and linguistic lines. But of those first 13, most focused on white male history. Only a few, such as those of Jenny Trout and Nellie McClung, addressed women's history. Only one had an indigenous focus to it. The one of Jacques Cartier meeting Chief Donnacona and learning the word Kanata. Only one Heritage Minute about Louis Frontenac, the governor of New France, focused on Francophone history. But it would not be long before the Heritage Minutes expanded to focus on a wider assortment of Canadians and events from our past. The Heritage Minutes always also seem to fall into six categories. Our northernness and the survival of early settlers and trailblazers, as well as our interactions with the United States. Some told the story of the French and English colonial past, while others focused on our geography and regionalism. Lastly, there was our role on the world stage and the sociological characteristics of the country. Beginning in 1992, the Heritage Minutes were screened before feature films at Cineplex Odeon Cinemas across Canada. Later in the decade, Universal Studios Home Video Canada jumped on board and started to include the Minutes in many home video releases. And throughout the 1990s, the Minutes were fixtures on major Canadian networks. For TV networks, this was a win-win. Canadian content requirements meant that a certain percentage of airtime per day had to be devoted to Canadian content. Each Heritage Minute counted towards that, and playing them through the day helped networks reach their CanCon requirements. Per week, 46 hours of Heritage Minutes were seen, which meant they reached 23 million Canadians each year. They were seen so often that some phrases became part of our collective culture. Burnt toast. Dr. Penfield, I can smell burnt toast. This is loaded, boys. You gotta get out of here. It's full of explosives. Take it. It's a gift. You never know. It might be worth something someday. Is he great or what? Bye -bye. Michael Levine says that Heritage Minutes continue to resonate with Canadians because they are stories wrapped in values. Uh, societies evolve. So, for example, uh, doing the minutes on gay rights uh, was something that in the 80s would not have resonated in exactly the same way. The, the growth of the BIPOC community and the, you know, the uh, reckoning of the Indigenous people with, fortunately, I have a great privilege of representing many indigenous writers. These are very important things, but like all history, history evolves. And so what seemed relevant in 1987 might still be relevant, but there are other issues that, that weren't relevant then. And my view is that these can continue indefinitely. As the Heritage Minutes expanded, their production value increased and they attracted several big names. Dan Aykroyd appeared in the Avro Arrow Heritage Minute, while Gordon Tatousis was in the Peacemaker Minute. Most famously, Academy Award nominee Graham Greene portrayed Sitting Bull in one. The Minutes also earned critical praise. In 1992, Director of Photography Steve Daniluk earned a Gemini Award nomination for the Halifax Explosion Heritage Minute. In 1997, that same minute, along with the stories of Jacques Plant and the Chinese railway worker, were turned into comic books. These comics were published and distributed to more than 900 McDonald's restaurants around Canada. The comics were given out to any young person coming into the restaurant for free. But this wasn't as successful as the launch of the minutes on television. Many criticized the use of marketing partners and the comic book format to convey serious issues, while others found there were historical errors. Following that venture, in 1998, 60 Heritage Minutes were compiled into one single VHS, which the media called This Hour Has 1,000 Years. That is a reference to the earliest Heritage Minute that detailed the story of the Vikings landing in Newfoundland around 1000 CE, and the iconic CBC show This Hour Has 22 Minutes, which premiered in 1993. The VHS also included a documentary about how the Heritage Minutes were made, along with interviews. 
Now, in many ways, it was ahead of its time as the era of DVD special features and commentaries was still a few years away. Patrick Watson said, We hear a lot of people saying they'd love to have the minutes at home. My attitude is let's get them out there and see how much use they're going to get. In 1999, Just a Minute More was released. This book featured dozens of stories about the subjects of the Heritage Minutes, as well as other stories from our past. After four years of releasing Heritage Minutes, production began to slow down. There were still Heritage Minutes, but they were coming out fewer in number as the media landscape changed. Nine Heritage Minutes were released in 1997, then none in 1998, and only two in 2000. One of which, by the way, starred Pierce Brosnan as the Englishman who posed as an indigenous man named Grey Owl and began the Canadian conservation movement. Side note, I'm doing that story in next week's episode. Then, for two years, there were no new Heritage Minutes. In 2003, new Heritage Minutes were released, but this time they were planned only for radio distribution. In 2015, a plethora, nine in total, of televised Heritage Minutes were then released. Eight were released as part of a military series while the last one was about Maple Leaf Gardens. Then, another desert of history, because there were no Heritage Minutes for the next seven years. And while it seemed at this point the Heritage Minutes had run their course, something came along that changed everything. YouTube. Suddenly, there was a new opportunity for the Heritage Minutes. As if preparing for the future in 1991, Historica Canada had created the type of one-minute quick content that would come to dominate the digital streaming media decades later. While some YouTube creators can spend months or years building up a portfolio of videos, Historica Canada already had dozens ready for streaming. Not only originals, but new ones could suddenly be made to reach a brand new generation of Canadians while appealing to the nostalgia of those, like me, that remember them from their youth. In 2012, the Richard Pierpoint Heritage Minute debuted, telling the story of the black Canadian who fought for Canada in the War of 1812, followed by the Queenston Heights Heritage Minute in 2013, which told the story of the battle that helped turn the tide of the War of 1812 for Canada. From then on, at least two Heritage Minutes have come out each year. This time, the Minutes were not exclusively on TV or in a quiz show, the minutes were launched in public in a variety of settings. For example, to debut the Heritage Minute about the Winnipeg Falcons, who won the first hockey gold medal at the Olympics in 1920, Historica Canada turned things up a notch. They launched it with events at the MTS Centre in Winnipeg during a Jets game, at the Hockey Hall of Fame in Toronto, and then broadcasted to Canadians during the intermission of a Penguins-Jets game. In March 2015, 53 Heritage Minutes were mashed up to recreate Drake's Started From The Bottom music video. Within 48 hours, this mashup had 100,000 views on YouTube. Two months later, a Heritage Minute about the Canadian nurses of the First World War launched in theatres in Toronto, Ottawa, Calgary and Halifax. And with this new rise in popularity, parodies of the Minutes, which had existed for years, also began to surface online. David Aronovich with Historica Canada said, We get that there's a lot of nostalgia there. While we take the minutes very seriously, we don't take ourselves too seriously. We can be in on the joke. As society evolves, so too have the minutes, which now have a much stronger focus on essentially non-white male stories. Since 2015, only two heritage minutes have focused on a white male historical figure. Michael Levine says it's all about the minutes evolving with society. I've always believed um, that uh, we all are a sum total of our values. And the heritage minutes are thinly described moral tales. Of the heritage minutes released in 2016, three focused on Indigenous stories, one on Black Canadian history, and two on Canadian women. That year, two of the Indigenous heritage minutes were released on June 21st, National Indigenous Peoples Day. On October 19th, 2016, a Heritage Minute about Kenawak Ashavak, the Inuk artist from Cape Dorset, was released. It was the first Heritage Minute that was not narrated only in French or English, but in a third language, Inuktitut. The release of the Jim Egan Heritage Minute in 2018 was the first time LGBTQ history was represented, and that was followed in 2022 with the story of Jackie Shane, a black transgender performer and an enduring queer icon in Toronto and beyond. To date, over 100 Heritage Minutes have been released. And as of this recording, the most recent one was the story of Paldi, the multicultural community on Vancouver Island. 
This Heritage Minute was released in conjunction with Asian Heritage Month in April 2023. Currently, a Heritage Minute is being filmed in Ogama, Saskatchewan, telling the story of baseball players who helped inspire the movie A League of Their Own. Anthony Wilson Smith says that three decades later, Heritage Minutes continue to resonate with Canadians, as seen by the press coverage and the millions of views online. So much of history teaching is about the big geography, the map, the date, how many people took place. You know, it's sort of too big to comprehend. But the minutes, when you look at the minutes, they're about individuals, small groups of people. And you look at them and you say, wow, you know, aside from, you know, so they spoke differently. They wore different clothes. They didn't have the same technology. But when you come down to it, when I'm watching and what I see is, you know, they were frightened. They were, you know, they were amused. They fell in love. They had the same emotions that we all have. You know, we can start to see how they could have been us or we could have been them. And when it takes place at ground level like that, that's when it really hits, you know, that's when you really get the feeling, you know, that you're, you're you know, you're looking and you're feeling history and understanding it. As you can imagine, if you release over 100 minutes of content, it doesn't always come without a bit of controversy. You might remember Louis Riel as the Canadian politician and founder of the province of Manitoba and the political leader of the Métis people. He led two resistance movements against the government of Canada and its Prime Minister, John A. Macdonald. In the minute, we hear voiceover narration as an actor playing Louis Riel stares at the camera. Then a sack is put over his head and it ends with his hanging. The Heritage Minute was criticized for being too violent for young people. Another Heritage Minute, about Canadian peacekeepers, was released in 1991, but Turkey's ambassador to Canada criticized it because he felt it depicted Turkish citizens in a poor light. The producers responded it was about the peacekeepers and no slight to Turkey was intended. The Minute was eventually pulled due to what producers said were inaccurate costume details. One of the main criticisms of the Heritage Minutes, at least the original 1990s run, is that they sometimes weren't always completely historically accurate. This was a minor criticism for most as the message of our history and the event was still very accurate. As Andrea Demir of the Sioux Star wrote, Canadian Heritage Minutes are not historical truths. They are dramatizations giving life and color to words in a textbook. Anthony Michael Smith says the Heritage Minutes are important to our collective understanding of where we came from and where we're going. Well, you know, it's sort of tough for me to say as the person who gets to oversee them now, but I think we hear all the time from people, particularly in their 30s and 40s, how this is what they grew up with. These are the stories. This is the process that first made them aware of history and got them thinking about it and made them aware of, you know, many more reasons to feel generally proud and sometimes to reflect more on their country. Now, if you're like me, you might be wondering, what is the greatest heritage minute of all? Well, as can be expected, not everyone can agree on which one truly reigns supreme. In 2012, Historic Canada commissioned a poll to determine the most popular heritage minutes. First place was a tie between Jackie Robinson and the Halifax Explosion. Months ago, I did my own heritage minute poll and after receiving over 10,000 votes, the most popular heritage minute was... Drumroll please! The Halifax Explosion. Personally, I love every Heritage Minute as they scratch that history itch for me, but if the Stanley Cup depended on it, my favorite Heritage Minute would be the one all about Maple Leaf Gardens. It's the perfect blend of history, nostalgia, and production values. And I'm saying that as a lifelong Edmonton Oilers fan. Fergus, tell us about the hockey. That con Smythe, he's going to call the team the Maple Leafs. The Maple Leafs. Says here he's going to build a new arena, too. Hope he comes up with a better name for it. <laughs> con, I told you, the bank can't find that kind of money to build an arena in this depression. Well, but Sir John, listen, we have a deal with the workers. Part of their pay in shares. Part of their pay in shares? Yes, sir. In that case, the bank will pick up the rest. She's doing up good, Patty. You're lucky you got a job. Yes, we are. I'll be up inside of six months. And open she did to thousands of glorious days and nights. The judgment of the people. Our father. Right in the future. And then one night, she stepped down. I hope you enjoyed that episode and our look at the Heritage Minutes. Next week, I'm looking at the story of Archie Bellany, a.k.a. Grey Owl. 
Information from Canadian Encyclopedia, Historica Canada, CBC, Montreal Gazette, Wikipedia, Vancouver Sun, Maclean's, Edmonton Journal, Calgary Herald, and The Ottawa Citizen. This show is researched, produced, and written by me, Craig Baird, with the help of Dila Velasquez. Audio production and design by Rosalind Kufor. If this is your first time listening and you like what you heard, please take a moment and give us a five-star review to help other people find these amazing stories. And there are so many for you to sink your teeth into. If you enjoy this podcast, then please check out my other podcasts, From John to Justin, Canada, A Yearly Journey, Pucks and Cups, and Canada's Great War. We love hearing from you, so if you have a show topic you want me to cover, email me at craig at canadaehx.com or stop by my website and social media. I'll include all of those in my show notes. Until next time, I'm Craig Baird, and this is Canadian History X.